today uh, really just as a chance to help explain uh, really, uh, today is a chance just to educate, right? To educate and, and hopefully the people that will watch this will walk away feeling like they have a better understanding as to where uh, where their money is going inside the cloud as well as um, h- how they can really make the best use of the dollars that their organization spends on the cloud. So today, um, today we're going to showcase a little bit about some of the biology's capabilities when it comes to cloud cost optimization. But more importantly, today is, it is really just a chance for our viewers to just learn. Just learn in general, what, what exactly does it mean uh, to help optimize the cloud? And if, if, if we can help people walk away feeling more confident in their understanding on cloud cost optimization, then mission accomplished. Mission accomplished. So again, today's, you know, just sit back, relax. This is all, this is mostly about educating and, and helping our, 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 our viewers understand really how to make the best of the cloud spend. So, so when we talk about cloud spend, you know, I mean, really in general, uh, you know, before I jump into that, you know, I really wanted to take a moment to highlight, you know, who our presenters are today uh, before we go into talking about cloud spend. Uh, my name is Joel Morales. I am the cloud practice manager at Vology. So I oversee uh, a number of things at Vology. I mostly oversee offering messaging. Uh, which is today's an example of that. We're messaging our offerings uh, really to our to our viewing public as well as to our customers that we're really passionate about. I also oversee offering uh, enhancement and development. So I oversee uh, the ability to work with different partners uh, to help enhance our service offerings, uh, to really just bring them uh, to the bleeding edge uh, uh, service capability that as far as we can in, in updating, enhancing our offerings, and then also developing new offerings uh, as as the industry demands, uh, you know, new trends, new technology support trends. Um, I, I've got just the just the, the wonderful opportunity of working with some of the best partners in the world: Microsoft, Cisco, Veeam, uh, HPE, uh, under the leadership of our executive team, Walt Walker. I report to Walt uh, on helping develop new offerings. So, messaging offerings, enhancing offerings, and helping. That's kind of what I oversee. Johnny, you want to tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah, so I'm here to uh, just help help guide. You know that that transition. Joel is is brilliant and you know excellent in knowing what he does, what Vology can do for you, and you know getting you guys taken care of. So you know I'm on on the marketing side, help figure out well what does that mean for my business. You know what does that mean in in everyday life and just. Uh, to kind of help help us navigate what does cloud optimization look like for for all of us and how can we utilize that so just from a, a marketing standpoint helping share the story of Vology and and what we have to offer and just really getting out there to, to show the world our expertise and and our innovation and what sets us apart as well as uh you really rock a, a great hat you really know how to rock a great hat. <laughs> Uh, so, you know, I, I just had some fit right on me, you know, maybe it's just uh, the shape of the head or something, but, you know, really rocking it, man. So right. that's today's panel. Well, let's go ahead and jump right in. So let, let, when we're talking about today's really, it's going to be a little bit less of a technical discussion. Really walk a, a great hat. We're going to be talking more of a, a, of a financial discussion. So, you know, again, cloud cost optimization does have some technical components that we are going to cover, but the majority of what everyone wants to know is really how how to make the best use of our dollars and and where's all the money going to when it comes to the cloud. So there are actual different cloud usage areas um, that the world's money is going to. Businesses, organizations, their dollars are going to. So, you know, broken down, uh, this is actually a, a chart that came out from Gartner uh, in April of 2021. So our Gartner was able to quantify how much money businesses spent um, you know, in 2021 on the cloud, as well as how much they're forecasting to spend uh, for the remainder of, uh, sorry, 2020 and 2021, and then what they're forecasting to spend in 2022. So that being said, we can see really the different areas of cloud that are consuming the most amount of dollars from businesses. So here we have uh, business process services. So uh, this is kind of like a cloud automation and, and, and that type of thing. This is uh, cloud application infrastructure services, cloud uh, application services or cloud SaaS, right? So there's PaaS, platform services, SaaS, 
uh, and then you know cloud security services and service offerings, and then cloud infrastructure services or infrastructure as a service, IaaS, which is really today is going to be the focus. We're going to talk about IaaS the most today. And then, of course, desktop as a service, right? So using thin clients and using a lot of your desktop applications really as an instance in the cloud. And really, as we're looking through this, you know, something every to where, you know, 100 and, you know, actually, if we look down at the uh, infrastructure as a service area, uh, this is the area of focus that we're going to be really paying attention to. Last year in 2020, businesses spent over $60 billion, just about $60 billion in infrastructure as a service. Now, of course, you know, their SaaS, app, their SaaS applications like Microsoft 365 or Google Workspace, right? That's the, that falls under the SaaS, but actual virtual infrastructure, actual virtual machines inside the cloud, those are examples of infrastructure as a service. And in 2020, businesses spent about 60 billion. Um, Gartner forecasts, Something about 82 billion will be spent this year, uh, and and something close to 100 billion will be spent uh, in 2022 on infrastructure as a service. So that, that's how much money we're talking here. I mean, this is not this is not a a, a industry that's going to go away. This is not an industry that is is shrinking. It's growing. Uh, something about 25 percent per year, and 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 as it grows, so will the amount of dollars that enterprise as well as small and medium-sized businesses was spending in the cloud arena. What do you think about this, John? No, I mean, that, that's amazing. Like, look, just looking at the chart, it's, you know, almost doubling from yeah. 2020, 2022 in, you know, such a short period of time, but that's, you yeah. know, substantial for sure. It is. And as automation increases, right? So um, business process services and automation and artificial intelligence increases, um, th these numbers are only going to continue to exponentially grow, exponentially grow as our dependency on cloud technologies um, continues to expand. Uh, so, so you're exactly right, John. You know, this is, this is not going anywhere. It's here to stay. It's growing. And with the growth of the cloud, so is the number of dollars that we waste every year, that number is growing as well, Johnny. Uh, yeah, you know, this is, uh, this is you know kind of super interesting, interesting to me, just because you know months ago you you asked me, you know, how, are you spending too much on the cloud? And right. you know, my response to you was, I don't know, am I? I'm, <laughs> I'm spending what I was told I had to spend. So right. you know, how, how do I? How do we know if if we're spending too much? That's, um, how do we know if we're spending too much? My gosh, that is a really, <laughs> that's a hard question uh, that has a lot of answers. That has a lot of answers. How do we know we're spending too much? Well, there's different areas of where an organization can spend too much. One example is they could be having, let's say, let's use Microsoft's cloud, for example. We love Microsoft here at Biology. We're a huge uh, Microsoft tier one CSP as well as a, a, a top tier gold partner for Microsoft in cloud platform and cloud productivity. So we'll, we'll just, we'll pick on Azure today. You know, we'll pick on Azure today. And, All right. And an uh, organization can have, let's say in on the SaaS side with having Microsoft 365 licenses, they could be spending uh, really too much per user if a user only needs, let's say email. If all they need is email and instead they have a really robust you know, Microsoft 365 E5 license, it's possible that they could have what we consider or we, what we call a, a over-provisioned license where, where their license per user is really not to the level of the actual consumption or usage needs that, that the actual uh, employee actually needs for their day-to-day -day production. So, you know, an employee could just need email and they could just use a web app and instead the organization is paying too much on their particular license. Now, that right there, Johnny, is one example where Vology can help step in as a partner, as a gold partner, as a tier one CSP, to help our customers uh, right size their, let's say, their 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 license uh, usage, right? So we can help sit down with the customer, do a proper uh, license assessment, uh, really find out what the requirements are for 365, and then help right size their licenses and their subscriptions to the actual business needs. So that's one example. Where, you know, Joel, you know, am I spending too much in the cloud? You know, well, this is one way to know, you know, are your licenses over provisioned? Another huge area where customers are spending too much money in the cloud is inside their infrastructure, inside their cloud infrastructure layer. 
or what we call the IaaS layer. Of the $60 billion, Johnny, that was spent last year in 2020 on cloud infrastructure as a service, 17.6 billion of it was wasted on businesses overspending on the cloud resources. Wow, that's crazy. And 60 billion was spent, 17 billion was wasted. And they didn't even know, probably. <laughs> no. Yeah. No, they didn't. <laughs> no, they didn't. A lot of organizations, you know, we talked with customers in the past and they, you know, some of the customers before we've done like a cloud cost optimization assessment, they, they have a suspicion, you know, they have a suspicion that they could be spending a bit too much on the cloud, but they feel like, you know, they, they don't really have the right tools or the right expertise in house to be able to actually tell or validate if they're spending too much. So a lot of companies, a lot of CIOs and a lot of CFOs and a lot of CTOs, they have a suspicion that they might be spending too much, but what they don't have is the right kind of partner to help educate on what the actual areas of waste usually are. Does that right. make sense? Yeah, I mean, you, you almost wonder, you know, how many, you know, almost every, every business company these days you hear about, you know, having to reduce budgets or, you know, allocate cost savings in different areas of the business, right? And and how many would even think of, you know, their cloud services to to be an area in that where, you know, kind of what you're mentioning, it's a could be a, a huge area of, of savings. Yep. Yep. And and again, you know, it's it, knowledge is power, right? You know, sometimes I mean people don't they don't plan to fail. They just sometimes just fail to plan. They fail to plan accordingly. A, a big corporate, a big culprit, sorry, not corporate, a big culprit of this issue, Johnny, is is at the migration. Usually uh, a lot of businesses have already spent a lot of money and a lot of time already migrating a lot of infrastructure in the cloud. So a lot of businesses already have a pretty substantial fingerprint in the cloud. There are still a lot of businesses out there that prefer on-premise or still have, you know, on-premise equipment that they prefer to maintain, whether for it's for security concerns or for compliance reasons or what have you. Uh, but for whatever reason, one reason or another, there are some businesses still have a lot of on-premise infrastructure. But on the flip side, a lot of businesses have already migrated a lot of their infrastructure to the cloud. Here's what happened, Johnny. You know, you have the traditional way of consuming like server infrastructure, which usually when a, when a business would go and buy a big new server every three to five years or a big new series of servers every three to five years, they would usually buy these servers, Johnny, with a lot of buffer in mind because they'll, they'll, right. consume, they'll consume this, this technology uh, over the course of three to five years. So they want to make sure that as their storage needs grow, as their compute needs grow, if they have, if they plan to bring in new employees and if they plan to add more features to their applications that'll cause those servers to work harder, they want to make sure that on the shelf life of that expensive technology that they're consuming, that they're going to get the most out of it for a three to five year span that they expect to use that server infrastructure for until they go and buy a new set of servers. Right. So a, a lot of IT administrators that typically were managing a lot of on-premise equipment, when when the opportunity to migrate to the cloud uh, started happening, you know, in the last you know decade or so, a lot of these uh, administrators really felt that they they carried a lot of their same on-premise approach into the cloud. So they ended up provisioning. Uh, a, a lot of their on-premise environment, almost cloning it in the cloud, and therefore it's causing costs to go way up, to go way, way up in the cloud. Because inside the cloud, you don't you don't need to buy infrastructure with a lot of buffer. You just don't. You only need to pay for what you use. So sometimes, you know, a lot of the time that this really, uh, a lot of the culprit of this problem or a lot of the reasonings or sources of the problem was when people migrated in the cloud, they migrated in a way that wasn't optimized. Does that make sense, Johnny? Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, you know, a few questions kind of come to mind in that, like, what do, what do they typically end up doing with all their on-premise, you know, equipment that they spent? Do they keep that running? Are they... You know, yeah. what, what is an efficient way to make that transition? And 
I mean, you know, there's all kinds of things. Uh, there's, uh, you know, HP has a great buyback program. So if they're if you're going to consume new, uh, you know, infrastructure, whether if it's cloud based or or or, or on premise based, you know, some organizations they'll they'll buy back your old infrastructures, you know, so that you could, you know, uh, you know, now focus on your new infrastructure. Or some organizations keep a lot of their uh, older infrastructure as backup uh, technology, or or they just you know dispose of it, dispose of it sometimes, you know, for regulatory compliance. You know, after a particular uh, uh, usage of a machine is, is used up and its lifespan is used up, there needs to be a certificate of destruction. So, you know, what happens after the data has been migrated? You know, it really depends on the business and what they're doing with it. But, but the 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 concern here is once the data is migrated, what does that environment in the cloud look like? What does that actual infrastructure environment look like? And where are the areas of waste? Now, something that I like to tell my customers, as well as anyone that wants to learn about how to save money in the cloud, think IOU. When it comes to cloud waste, just, just think of the acronym IOU. And the cloud waste breakdown is something like this. I, idle resources, O, over-provisioned resources, or U, unreserved instances. IOU, idle resources, over-provisioned resources, and unreserved instances. These are the three major areas of cloud waste that we see inside the infrastructure layer. So I'm going to take a few moments, if you're okay, Johnny, just to break these down as to what, what this really means when I, when I talk about idle resources. So yeah, great, IOU, cloud waste areas. So the first one is idle resources. Idle resources is, think about, think about your, your infrastructure in the cloud. Think about your developers, your DevOps teams. Think about how they're using it and when they're using uh, these technologies available. A lot of the times, some some of these developers that, that organizations work with that are using uh, you know this virtual server inside the cloud, a lot of the times they're not using it 24 by seven. A lot of the times they're using it Monday through Friday, eight to five. And then maybe with a little bit of access on the weekends, but for the most part, this, these resources are not necessarily being used 24 by seven. However, even though they're not being used 24 by seven by the employee user base, a lot of the times there's, there's many resources that continue to run even if they're not in use. Now, one of the key areas of, of dollars in the cloud is we get charged, not necessarily for consuming the device, but we get charged for the time we use the device on. So we're actually charged for compute time. So even if you're not using that particular virtual machine or a series of virtual machines, and it's still running, your organization is still getting charged for that idle resource. So one of the things that Vology does with our, with our you know, cloud cost optimization services is we will help uh, non-prod resources be scheduled properly will help non-prod resources be scheduled properly. There's some resources that you have to run 24 by seven because they support your client facing application and it just needs to run all the time. But there are other resources, especially in the dev environment that don't need to run 24 by seven. And we can actually schedule uh, working with our clients. We can actually set up a time to schedule these resources on when they're gonna be used as well as kind of like a buffer, if you will, of, of an hour or two. If they're gonna be used eight to five, you could set up uh, the usage time of seven to six or something like that, right? Then yeah. um, we can we can actually turn these resources off to save money on that compute time, that precious precious compute time. You can turn it on when you need it, turn it off when you're not, and then when it's turned off, you don't have to spend the money uh, when it's actually shut off. So this typically saves sometimes immediately thirty percent for some organizations right out the gate. Right out. Yeah, the you, gate. you almost think about you know minutes, right? If you every minute that it's running in the background or running idle, that it's not being utilized. It's maybe a, a small portion in that minute, but the course of a year that adds up to a lot, you know? And take that minute and let's make it 10 minutes of waste times a thousand employees or times right. five employees or times 200 employees. That, you know, it, in the case of time is money, it could not be more true in the case of the cloud. In the cloud, time is actually money. <laughs> Wow. Time is actually money. So let's talk about over-provisioned resources. So we talked that we covered idle resources. Let's talk a little bit about over-provisioned resources. So let's say, let's say we've taken the time to shut off these machines when they're not in use, especially those in the dev environment. That's a great win for cloud cost optimization. What's another area of waste? Well, 
the actual size of the machines themselves. So not only do we need to make sure that we're turning these machines off when they're not in use, but, but the actual size of the machines themselves is a huge factor when it comes to understanding uh, waste in the cloud. Sometimes uh, people are just paying for a larger capacity than they actually need. Because remember, a lot of people, when they provisioned resources in the cloud, they were still, they were still had the on-premise mindset with their cloud resources. So they wanted to, to make sure that they purchased machines with a lot of buffer in the cloud, with, with a lot of excess uh, a, a CPU a buffer, but it's just not necessary, especially when we have something called elasticity in the cloud, where if there's a particular uh, you know, traffic influx that's really, really high, that's causing that server uh, CPU to spike, well, you can actually set that uh, uh, virtual machine inside a pool of resources, put a load balancer in front of it, and put something called and put it into something called the scale set. This is what it's called the scale set inside of Azure or an auto scale group inside of AWS. And then if there's a lot of traffic influx that's causing a lot of work on that machine, you can just clone and duplicate your machines in the cloud as a scalable pool of resources. And then when the traffic dies down, the, the, the pool of resources can again uh, scale back in. So you don't even need to worry about, you know, over provisioning these resources so much just in case there's a big traffic influx, especially when you could leverage elasticity in the cloud. So yeah. over provision resources. I like to, when I'm talking to my customers, Johnny, I, I usually tell them, I tell them, you know, you really only needed to lease a Toyota, but instead you ended up getting a Ferrari. <laughs> you know, and <laughs> a lot of the times as we tell the customer, listen, you know, you, you, you really just needed the Toyota here, but instead you got the Ferrari. So uh, let's go ahead and scale you back down. So this is called scaling down the machines. There's scaling in, scaling out, and then scaling up and scaling down. Where we will come as a trusted partner uh, to help organizations uh, really determine what is the best machine size to scale down to. Because the other thing too is, okay, some organizations are like, all right, fine. I I've got this idea that I need to turn off my machines when they're not in use. That's fine. Okay, fine. I have this idea. I understand this idea about uh, you know scaling down my machines to a smaller size. But what worries me is what if I scale down to a machine that's too small? What if I end up what if I end up scaling down to a machine that's too small and now now I've got a performance issue on my hands. You know, now I've got an issue in production on my hands. Well, that's where a trusted partner like Biology can help step in, analyze your actual CPU utilization on your machines, uh, your, your RAM, your, your, your IOPS, your inputs, your outputs, and be able to then make a recommendation on say, hey, based on how many uh, hard disks and disks that are attached to this particular machine, what types of disks that this machine is attached to, to um, how much consumption and utilization this machine is using, we can then recommend a more cost-effective, more affordable machine at a more appropriate size. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's like, you know, you got to think of how many how many businesses and industries out there where, you know, it's, it, whether it's seasonalities or fluctuations throughout the year, whether it's, you know, yes. retail, Hiring sprees, you know, Thanksgiving, oh. Christmas time, like onboarding, training lots of employees, you know, just different demand levels throughout the year. So just that idea of elasticity and scalability makes, you know, tremendous sense. I'm so glad you brought that up, Johnny, because, you know, we work with we work with large retailers across the country, as well as large insurance organizations around the country. And what we have found is there are certain seasons where they are ramping up resources like crazy. And then and then they just don't need those resources anymore. Yeah. So then they ramp back down. Well, in the traditional on-premise uh, approach, you would have to just basically buy enough resources, like I said in the past, with enough buffers just to cross your fingers and hope that the resources you purchased um, would be enough to handle the demand that would be brought upon them in the following fiscal year. Well, the best thing about cloud elasticity is that it takes out the guesswork. It takes out the guesswork. You can now, based on based on whatever traffic anomalies come in, 
if there's just a big anomaly one day or a day that you can't forecast the amount of traffic and or demand technical demand on your resources, that's where the cloud elasticity and scalability are a huge win uh, for organizations. And that's why it's like, you know, uh, uh, we tell people all the time, we still see cases like this where, you know, where, where the, you know, once the, the, the pandemic once first hit and a lot of people were trying to use uh, resources for applying for, for, for unemployment, a lot of these websites shut down. They just shut down. They couldn't handle the influx of traffic because, and, and I'm not to say that, uh, you know, I'm some kind of fortune teller, but I can guess a lot of those uh, websites are being supported by on-premise infrastructure that they didn't really plan for this anomaly of, yeah. of traffic influx. And that's the best thing about the cloud. The cloud's got you covered in case, uh, you know, unplanned um, tra traffic influx. So why don't we pull up the screen here? Uh, I believe... We're back here. So, so we have idle resources. Now we have over-provisioned resources. How do we fix idle resources? Well, we put these machines on a schedule uh, and we turn them off when we're not in use and we turn them on when they are in use and we, we create a buffer and we create a schedule around the customer's actual usage timelines during the week. And that way we can save some money there uh, and prevent waste. Right-sizing the resources that are just too large. They're just too large for the amount of capacity. Johnny, I've seen resources that are 1% average utilization, 1%. Like I'm oh. talking like CPUs that are there, they're, they're paying month a month, <laughs> month a month on this. And it's between one to two to 3% utilization. We tell people, Hey, let's go ahead and right size this right away. Let's right size this right away. And then of course, unreserved instances. So this one is uh, the most common when people think cloud cost optimization. It's it's the easiest to understand. It's you telling the cloud, whether if it's AWS or Azure or GCP, you're telling your cloud provider, hey, I plan to use these virtual machines for at least 24 months, for at least 12 months, or for at least 36 months. And when you then reserve these instances or reserve these virtual machines in the cloud, the cloud provider is willing to provide discounts to organizations. Sometimes, Johnny, these discounts can be as much as 70 plus percent on a three year reserve instance. So us as a, as a technology consultant, we can step in and say, hey, we can really help do a deep dive in a customer's environment to find out which of these machines do you plan on using for longer than 12 months? How many of them do you plan on using for longer than 24? Or, and then are there any that are up to 36 months of usage? And if that's the case, let's get them on a reserved instance capacity so we can capture the savings. So again, these are the three major areas. Idle resources, I. Over-provisioned resources, O. And unreserved instances, U. So now, now that we've covered this, um, really, you know, let's talk a little bit about the actual service we provide, if that's okay. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, in my mind, I'm like, all right, how do how do I figure this out? How do I know where all these IOUs are coming out of my cloud? You know, or yeah, who, right. who am I owing? That's right. Or how can I solve this problem? Okay, Joel. So now that you've brought up the problem and you, you've shared with me the concepts on on how to solve it. What can I actually do? Well, um, there's a number of things that people can do. All of this, uh, a lot of this uh, is is conceptual. I know. Uh, but, you know, one of the best things to do is to work with a partner that's already done this a number of times. So that way you don't end up running into a production issue because you right sized the machine uh, to you, you brought you scaled down a machine from one size to to one that's too small. And now you have performance issues in production. You know, uh, you, you end up, you know, right sizing, let's say, storage capacity to something that's too small. Um, and, and now you're running into you know, running out of storage or something like that, or, you, you know, you ended up putting your storage lifecycle a bit too far out of place. And now, and now you need certain files, but the SLA to retrieve them is 12 to 13 hours instead of 12 to 13 minutes, depending upon what storage tier you put them in the cloud. Like mm -hmm. these are the kinds of things that organizations, they know that they could probably do something, but it's best to trust a provider that's doing this on a regular basis that knows where all the gotchas are that knows where all the gotchas are in your journey of optimizing the cloud. In this case, um, this is actually uh, one of our uh, explanatory slides that we take the time to share with our customers. You know, what do we actually do in our cloud cost optimization services? Uh, we, we, we just love the hashtag Vology Love Savings. If the cloud loves waste, 
Vology loves savings. And so it's it's actually pretty simple. It's pretty straightforward. The assess we start with an assessment, and this assessment is is kind of a, there's a visual here for it. Uh, it's your cloud environment. We take your cloud environment. Now, typically, our assessments mostly work with Azure. We can do some work with AWS. Right now, currently, our assessments don't support GCP at the moment. At the moment, so really, this is mostly for organizations that are using Azure. And again, we can do some of this for AWS, but this is ideally for organizations consuming Azure infrastructure. So we take your Azure environment and we deploy uh, our Viper application. So we actually have a Viper platform that has a, a, a series of applications and tools baked into the platform. Um, so we don't just use you know, one approach or, or one, one set of lenses. We actually have uh, multiple uh, data points that we, we work together to analyze your cloud environment. And then the deliverable of the assessment is a report. And this report, we will actually share with the customer all the areas that we found, uh, the areas of waste, as well as what recommendations we have to the customer that they can go if they wanted to, Johnny, they can take this report and run with it themselves. They can end up, okay, now Vology's given me a list of, of of resources that are too large, what they're currently costing, and then what resources to right size them to and what the new cost would be. Like we will give the customers, I mean, full disclosure, no cloak and dagger. We'll give them everything that we can on this report to enable them to then run uh, and try and help walk through their own cloud cost optimization journey. Or if the customers want, we can provide the assessment and we can actually provide the remediation. We can provide the assessment that gives them all the data that empowers them uh, to be able to at least understand where their areas of waste are specific to their cloud environment. And then Vology can actually be the partner that executes on these advisories on behalf of the customer. And this is where we will set up uh, project management time windows. We'll, we'll help the customer understand what are the areas of low impact that we could, you know, low hanging fruit, if you will, that we could start eliminating certain unused resources that don't affect production, um, as well as what are the areas of high impact that we can then say, okay, listen, you know, for us uh, to be able to execute these changes, we're gonna need a certain little bit of scheduled downtime, you know, so we'll make sure that we execute this at 3 a.m. or something like that, so that it doesn't so much interrupt your production environment, as well as, you know, uh, your customers interfacing with some of your applications if we were to right size uh, some resources that support customer facing uh, workloads. Now, now that, does that usually take. Say it again. How long does it usually take for you know somebody that says, "Hey, you know, come help me figure out, do my cloud assessment." What is, was that yeah. process to get a report? That that's a great question. That's a great question. So typically, a re an assessment. And I'll, I'll kind of skip back to that page so that we kind of walk through this. Usually. Usually the assessment um, is about 30 days. Okay. So depending upon size and complexity, depending upon size and complexity, a assessment can run sometimes two weeks, uh, sometimes 40 days, sometimes uh, it just depends on size and complexity. What we like to tell our customers is on average an assessment will run for 30 days. And that's because we like to run our an uh, analysis tools um, on the Viper platform, we like to run those for at least 30 days to get a good end-to-end uh, uh, -end of an entire calendar month of consumption and utilization, um, as well as it allows our tools times to backtrack and go and, and look backwards as far as utilization patterns uh, uh, throughout the prior uh, the prior six months. So we run the assessment for about 30 days. Now, actually providing the remediation, that that really it just depends on the size complexity of the actual project. So we tell people remediation is at least 30 days, uh, but plan anywhere between, uh, uh, you know, I say anywhere between four to eight weeks, four okay. to eight weeks. It could be a little bit more, but, but you know, a assessment can be anywhere between two to four weeks. A remediation can run anywhere between four to eight weeks plus. And that depends on, uh, you know, on right sizing windows, you know, because a lot of the times, um, it's not always the case. It's not always the case, but sometimes when you need to scale down a machine, uh, it needs to be rebooted. Not always, but there are some cases where the certain infrastructure in the cloud that when it's scaled down, there's gonna be a blip, if you will, in 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 its in its production capacity because it's being rebooted, and and that that's just something that 
that we will schedule and we will coordinate with our project managers and the customers uh, so that as we're moving through their subscriptions in the cloud and as we're right sizing, uh, that we're doing it in a way that um, that is as of best case for the customer. Does that make sense, John? Yeah, for sure. And then, of course, you know, um, you know, the area of focus, like I've mentioned before, is that infrastructure layer. You know, just to just to make sure that we're clear, if a customer wants to find out what areas they're saving in the cloud, we're, we're not necessarily talking about software as a service. We're not talking about their platform platform services. We're talking about their infrastructure services. We're talking about servers. We're talking about IP addresses. We're talking about virtual hardness, data disks, OS disks. Uh, we're, those are the kinds of, of virtual infrastructure that we're talking about and the areas in which we can provide value. Now, speaking of providing value, I figured we'd take the time to do a bit of a, a, a customer comparison or a customer story. Uh, this is just one example um, uh, of, of, of how we were able to work with our platform along with uh, something called Azure Advisor to help find areas of, of cost savings. So. A lot of customers, uh, some customers may be aware, some customers may not be, that there is something called Azure Advisor that is something that Microsoft provides as a as recommendations for you to save money in their cloud. I, I, I have nothing but great things to say about the Azure Advisor service. It is It, it will identify usually some of the simplest, uh, uh, easiest, low-hanging fruit to address to help uh, customers save money. And a lot of the times it will pick out what I say is the big rocks. It'll point out the big rocks. Hey, listen, you know, you got some unreserved uh, machines that could probably benefit from a one-year reserve. Um, you Maybe you've got some some database optimization that you could provide. You know, maybe you've got a, a couple of machines that could be right-sized. And this was actually a real customer case. I, I, I won't share the name of the customer for privacy's sake, but um, we actually did a, a Azure Advisor and Viper uh, um, uh, really just assessment to show what, where we added more value, where we added more value. Again, nothing, nothing to say against Azure Advisor, but we, we ended up, we were able to find other things that Azure Advisor, for whatever reason, just did not bring up, um, in, in our assessment to the customer. So again, in this case, there's 26 reserved instances that Azure Advisor uh, actually uh, um, recommended where where there was 26 virtual machines that, hey, listen, looks like you've been using this for a while. Why don't we get them on a one-year reserve? Um, there was a database reserve capacity uh, that they recommended, which came out to about 7,000. And then again, uh, some virtual machine uh, right-sizing opportunities that Azure did right, make some recommendations on. Um, but then we then we then what we did was, like I said, we, we have multiple tools and multiple data sources inside the Viper platform that all work together to help find any other, uh, even smaller pieces of cost optimization that maybe may not come up in the Azure Advisor dashboard, because every when it comes to you know businesses getting the most out of their cloud, every penny counts. And so you know, for example, the Viper platform found the same 26 one-year reserved instances, the same database reserve capacity, uh, but we actually found 33 virtual machines. Uh, in a customer's environment that could be used uh, for right sizing, which uh, the difference with that was 25,000 with Azure Advisor and 41,000 uh, with Viper. And then what we found was was actually a whole list of resources that weren't brought up in the Azure Advisor uh, portal or uh, dashboard, but unused resource elimination. So there was a lot of resources that weren't in use. A lot of organizations don't know this, but when you shut down or delete a virtual machine, sometimes those those disks that were attached to that machine, they still stay in existence in the cloud environment. And though even though you know organizations are doing their best and following best practices to delete certain virtual machines, sometimes some some hidden costs can be found in the disks that were attached, the OS disk, data disks, and even the unused IP addresses. Uh, so in this case, uh, we actually would have found an additional seventeen thousand dollars for the customer uh, for for uh, for being able to recommend uh, resource unused resource elimination. Um, and then there are other recommendations that we were able to provide the customer that weren't even related to cost optimization, but just cloud optimization in general. There were you know there were fourteen VMs that were in stop state. The customer was not getting built for it, but they were sitting there in stop state, not in use. This could be something that the customer could decide to just delete them um, for, for keeping their cloud management 
administration as clean and organized as possible. Uh, there was something like 60 storage accounts that were not uh, lock enabled to restrict the deletion. So you can actually, in the cloud, you can actually create uh, something like a prevention uh, a method to prevent for accidental deletion of a storage account. And, and we found 60 storage accounts that didn't have this kind of preventative measure in place where they were at risk for accidental deletion. And so we were able to find that information and provide that to the customer. Uh, we were able to find uh, four unassigned virtual networks, uh, VNets, uh, 16 unassigned network security groups, five unassigned uh, 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 availability sets, and, and I mean, just on and on. So then the total numbers, it was something like 50,000 Azure Advisor was able to recommend in annual estimated savings and, and something like uh, close to 80,000 that Viper was able to find for the same customer. So again, we 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 just really are, if the cloud like loves waste, Fology loves savings. We are so passionate about ensuring that our customers get uh, really the best possible uh, uh, experience in the cloud, as well as maximizing their revenue and their spend uh, as they consume cloud resources. So, I mean, that's really just a, a, a really just a top-down uh, understanding and presentation on on really what we do. And 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 I hope that this, John, if you feel that this was useful, um, so that our customers at least get an idea of of get them this. The whole idea was to help prov uh, provide a chance for customers to think a little bit more on, on really, hmm, you know, now that Joel brought up some interesting points, there might be some areas of excess waste in our cloud environment that that, that maybe we can take action on. Uh, so again, this was this was just a, uh, you know, I didn't want to take up too, too much time, but this was just our chance to to share what we know. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and share how we could potentially help if, if a customer were, were to request us for that, so. Well, one thing that, you know, just, looking through kind of when you guys implement the Viper platform during the assessment, you know, you're not only providing areas of cost savings, you know, you're, you're adding more value going above and beyond that and just saying, Hey, did you know there's like I said, 60, 60 instances where there was no, you know, accidental deletion yes. prevention lock, you know, measure. So it's, it's beyond just saving and optimizing it's, yes finding other instances where you, you're protecting and, and helping them out as well. Right, that's exactly right. And and again, the, the goal is, is the best customer experience. That's always the goal. The goal is always the best customer experience possible. And and a lot of the times customers, you know, they love the benefits of the cloud, um, but it's actually a, a statistic that over one third of cloud migrations have failed or, or let me just say it like this, it's like 33% of businesses over the last 10 years have felt that they are not uh, receiving true cost benefits or or cost ROI in moving to the cloud and moving to the cloud. And so, uh, you know, it's something that we, we see as a problem at Phology and it's something that we're just really dedicated to help fix. And there's, again, there's a lot of quick fixes, a lot of low hanging fruit um, that customers can start saving dollars almost immediately. And, and it's it's really it's really just working with a partner that's passionate about savings like us and getting a plan together and then addressing the areas I covered today, IOU. You know, yeah. compensate waste, well, how on earth is it almost $20 billion in waste Almost a third of last year's infrastructure spend was wasted. How on earth is it possible? IOU, mm -hmm. idle resources, over provision resources, and unreserved instances. So one last question. So if you know, in a, in a way, you know, we use the the Toyota Ferrari analogy earlier on. So if if I'm thinking this in terms of a tune-up, you know, mm -hmm. you know, cloud optimization, right? We're gonna go through the assessment, figure out where our savings are. Now, say we've done this, how often do you recommend kind of rerunning through mm. that process as an organization just to, you know, almost in that tune-up mindset? Is that something you do once a year, once every five years? What do you guys kind of recommend? Yeah, that's, that's, a, that's a phenomenal question. I'm glad you brought that up. It really depends on the customer's environment. 
right? There are some customer environments where it's very static. There's not a lot of, uh, of, of, of what I call uh, um, uh, expanding and contracting. There's not a lot of expanding and contracting in a customer's environment, so it's very static. Uh, some customers, they will, they will hugely benefit from a assessment and then a professional services project from Bology that plugs up the holes, and then there really isn't a lot of changes that take place in that customer's environment. So then maybe just you know once a quarter or something like that would be really great for a customer like that, where, where it doesn't need to be weekly scans or or even monthly scans, right? Um, but there are other customers that experience a lot of expanding and contracting inside their, their Azure environment, and they need someone to help provide almost like a monthly scan, as well as a monthly report, and uh, the governance ability or the governance authority in that environment to be able to execute on the changes that, that, that we would recommend. So it really depends on the customer's environment. And, and that's what I mean by, th this is not a one size, fits all. It's just not. Um, yeah. So some customers, again, they would really benefit from something like once a quarter. Some customers, you know, some customers, they could really benefit from something like once a month, once yeah. a month. And uh, and this is something that we could then provide, uh, you know, almost as a managed service, if you will, uh, where, where a customer can then choose to just uh, opt in for Vology Cloud cost optimization month over month. Like, hey, you know, I want, I want an organization that after they have found, you know, you know, 10 to 15 to 20 percent plus savings, they've then executed on 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 those advisories that they recommended. We saw the savings in our bill two or three months down the road after they made the changes. And now I just want someone to watch my environment on a regular basis. Um, that That's a service that we can actually help provide to our customers. Uh, should, should they should they want it? Should they want it? Should they see the value? Does that make sense? Yeah, it's almost like, you know, you have you you probably could be at a point where you migrate to the cloud, and you assume it's a set it and forget it type of thing, but your business is fluctuating. Things you know your needs are changing constantly. So, you know that's where you know kind of running that assessment, figuring out where are areas of cost savings, but it also sounds like with the right partner. You know, it, it could be that peace of mind that said it and forget it with, you know, you guys kind of on the back end running those scans, you know, giving us a heads up of of areas of savings, areas of, you know, you know, other services you guys offer. But through that, it's like, you know, I think finding the right partner seems to make a big difference. And again, you know, we we feel that. Uh, a lot of this data we, we can share with the customer almost immediately. And then, you know, we have some customers that we've shared this assessment with them and they've chosen to, because we provide so much robust reporting in our initial assessment, some of our customers have chosen to just uh, to just run with the report themselves and, and work with their internal IT, uh, you know, server, um, some of their IT infrastructure uh, management teams and engineers to be able to execute on the findings that we that, that we discover in the assessment. And some other customers, they, they, even if they have, you know, some skills in-house when it comes to cloud administration, they they just want someone that just has already done this before. Hey, you've already done this before. Um, it, it makes me a little bit nervous to start turning the knobs on my machines. Can you come in here and can you help us? Can you just help us do this so that we can, so we can then capitalize on the savings that you potential, the potential savings that you found and, and so we're happy to do both. We're happy to provide the data. Um, we're also happy to serve in the areas where a customer could use uh, could use our help. And so um, it, it's it's really just um, it, it's instant. I call it instant ROI. It's instant ROI. Obviously, our our skills and our services they they you know we have some of the world's best engineers at Polygy. Really, I, I really do mean that. And you know we put these engineers to work on a customer's environment. So it's not without cost, the services, but but we, we can at least map out what the return on investment will be for a customer. Um, you know, a lot of times with, with IT, it's really hard to be able to determine, hey, if we do uh, this kind of effort, wh what is gonna be our return on investment uh, for our organization? And a lot of times it's, it's really hard to define that. What I like about this area or this arena, it's it's actually relatively easy to find out 
uh, you know, what the estimated savings will be after we execute on the advisories that we found. And so, and again, we like to tell customers, uh, this is estimated, this is, this is an estimated uh, findings because if, if, if let's say we're running our scan and we say, okay, based on your environment right now, based on your environment as is right now, you know, we can then uh, make these changes and we can find an estimated savings of X amount of dollars. If we end up making those changes, Johnny, if we end up making those changes and then the following day, the customer decides to spin up a bunch of resources on right. their own and, and end up uh, just going a free for all in the cloud, then, then, then again, we'll have to run the scan again next month <laughs> right? And, right. and have a different conversation. But, but, you know, we, we're working on tracking the needle with the customer. So we can say, hey, listen, based on what we've seen and the usage of the last six months and the usage of the last 30 days, we feel confident that there's an estimated savings of X amount of dollars available for you if you were to allow us to execute on these changes. And so that's the service. And that's, that's really, again, uh, today I, I really was just trying to educate uh, the yep. viewers that, that would consume this is, you know, there's three major areas. Idle resources, over provision resources, unreserved instances. You know, go now, <laughs> go right now. This session and start start looking up Azure Advisor and, and start start getting that. Uh, you know, start getting and start exploring potential savings. And if you'd like to learn more about what Vology can do to help your organization uh, save on its cloud environment, please feel free to reach out uh, to myself. Respond to the comments in this LinkedIn video, um, or, or or just reach out to us on our website www. .vology.com. That's great. Well, I appreciate you sharing today, Joel, and yeah. you know, helping me learn a lot. So hopefully uh, others as well. And I, I agree. I, I like savings, so I'm sure <laughs> everybody else is is on board with that. Well, you know what? I hope so. I hope so, and I hope that we can help in any way that we can. Uh, thanks so much, Johnny, for hosting this, and, and thank you, everyone. Uh, for participating in today's session on uh, how to save money in the cloud. So thanks so much, everybody. Awesome. See ya.